What can I say? It's big, it's crazy, it's impractical. That's why I love it so much. It's the CH3531 NG10. And of course, we still got it all gooped up. I mean, no matter what I do. Uh, so the 3531 NG10 ND2 blade. And yes, that is heavy stone wash. Interesting, big, huge choil up here up front, and a nice hole there where you can hang it on a pegboard if you wanted to, but it's a folding knife, and it's heavy, but it's skeletonized liners, but that doesn't make any difference because it's heavy. And it's a flipper, and it guillotines. It's very guillotine-ish out of the box. I'm going to disassemble this. Uh, so maybe we could adjust the pivot to make it a little less guillotine-ish. But this blade is big, thick, heavy. So I think it's going to be the chore of the day to try and slow that thing down. By the way, they also come in black if you don't like green. Although they both have the same color backspacer, orange, the same kind of pocket clip, obviously right hand tip up only so there's the black one you think that's a little guillotine ish as well yeah bank right there uh but interesting so let's start right out of the box because i think one of the big deals for a lot of people is wait and it's 7.16 ounces that's 203 grams Okay, let's just, uh, this should be exactly the same. Well, 202 grams, so it's a gram difference, but uh, a little over a gram difference. So, yeah, there was a little bit of variation there. That's heavy. That's heavy. It's a heavy dog. Now, how big is that old boy? And I'll tell you what, how about my rhino? Because my Ultra X Rhino is a big boy. It's a big dog. And they're just about there, aren't they? Just about there. Flip them around to change that perspective and get the tips of the knives together. That's about the same. I love my Ultra X. I know it's not fancy or anything. Got it from White Mountain, but just love the... Love the design of it. But these CH knives, I didn't want it to be about the CH knives in G10. I think I'd do a separate video on that. I wanted to focus on the 3531. But I wanted to show you, you know, briefly about the 3530, which is a smaller knife. And this is fairly new, kind of the same time frame as far as when it came out. And this one is much lighter. In fact, you know what? Let's just do maybe a little bit of a shootout here. Because this 3531 is one, when Linus was visiting, is when this box came in. Thank you to CH Knives and my buddy Way at 9TIEDC for sending these knives for review. And there's 113 grams. So way under 200 grams. Um roll it around to ounces so this is four ounce knife okay this is a four ounce knife see what i'm saying so and and this one also comes in black so nice looking knife i like the blade shape and everything and these are in d2 as well one of these days uh d2 will finally fade from um the perceived popularity because I think it's turning into more of a perception than a reality. Most people, I think, are about ready to see D2 go bye-bye. Uh, D2 can vary so much in the vanadium content, this and that, and still be called D2. So you can it can be the devil or the deep blue sea with D2. Uh, I think other materials are a little less likely to 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 change to be variant in in their formula so 
we'll get off of that. But, you know, just think about it. Sandvik Steels, N690, VG10, OS8. There's a lot of other materials out there uh, that are more corrosion resistant. So that's a good thing because D2 just doesn't work in a lot of humid climates since it's just a semi stainless at about 12 percent 11.8 to like 12.1 whatever percent chromium all right so how big is this knife well we compared it to the rhino but let's throw out something more traditional like the shaman i mean the shaman's a full-size knife right yikes and how about oh how about my yeah K390 uh, Para 2. You know, and that's a full-size knife too. But yes, no, 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 no. It's not even close. Pull my tape measure. And this is going to be a full four-inch blade, I'm pretty sure. And it is. It's four and a quarter, really. So it's like about 106, 107 millimeters. And it's over nine and a quarter at... 23 and a half centimeters at least so you know nine point let's say 9.3 inches overall length now it's heavy uh but i mean it's got some nice thick steel liners and there's your lockup okay so that's a pretty solid lockup at about 35 percent grippy g10 Nothing special about the pocket clip, uh, but it's it's not. Let me pull this back. But it it you know it's somewhat springy. I mean, there's lots of pocket clips stiffer than that. Now that's okay, and I like the fact that it levels off. So this goes over the lippier uh, seam of the pocket. Good. It'd be nice to have deep carry. But I don't have that on this. Um, might be able to find one out there somewhere. I don't know. Or somebody might start making them for the G10 models. But yeah, and, and the good thing about this, even being a flipper, is contact patch. I mean, a lot of times when you have a flipper tab, and I'm, I'm going to try and find something with a flipper tab that can be... Uh, this isn't bad here either, my Hornet. This isn't bad, but there's a lot of them that are like this, okay? And so when you have a good contact patch here, well, this could be very usable for a lot of uh, cutting tasks that involve chopping. And, you know, hey, I mean, it looks like a butcher knife in the kitchen, even though this is not the CH knife butcher. This one is. <laughs> this is the butcher. Um, and I don't, I guess, I thought I had the name. The name was on here. And no, it's not. But, oh well. It's here. Okay. Uh, butcher 2, whatever that means. And I got an early run of this, and I'll get into that some other day. But, yeah, this one needs to kind of get exchanged for a later run model before I put this on camera but interesting knife not the butcher or if it is it's the butcher one but I haven't heard it called a specific name so there it is and probably after I get done doing this I'll, find, I'll run across it and it it'll be called the butcher one I don't know but I kind of refer to this as the butcher because you know of the style of knife it is so there you go with that but yeah heavy long uh guillotine ish but it's on bearings and it's easy to flip let me see about detent yeah that's really easy but man you got a lot of weight on that blade so this is not difficult okay uh 3.5 5 to 4.0, probably closer to 3.5. It's just really easy to, to do that. It's easy to disengage as well right here. So that's easy. And it gets over the detent ball very quickly. 
I don't think the detent ball could hold it in <laughs> regardless. You know what I mean? It's going to go. So, yeah, and it's centered. No blade play. No lock rock. So it's solid. And you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll steer you to two different places because it's like $32 knife, right? So that's not terribly expensive. I think I had it on favorite budget knives and, you know, that kind of thing. No, I think I had the 3519. I think I had this model because this is much more carryable and utility oriented in, in my view. And I really like the style, especially in blue, you know, but this is interesting as well. And it's very inexpensive, but there's the stats, stuff like that. So if you want to see that. And, you know, there you go. Same price. And this is my buddy 9TIEDC. So check his store out. This is where these knives came from. Okay? And they got here in reasonably decent time, coming from China, etc. Also, check White Mountain Knives because he is carrying CH knives now. Take a look. You've got jimping. So you've got kind of a thumb ramp here. And so you can really get up on this. Oh, by the way, let's get a piece of paper out here. Come on, buddy. Wow. Okay, yeah, that just, yeah, that just floated across there. That, that's sharp. Actually, that's really, really sharp. Um, hello? Next? Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, it's weird when it just is almost silent when it goes across. Uh, yeah, that's, they're scary sharp. They're really, really sharp. So that's, that's good. I think that's good. Unless your finger's in the way. Bye-bye finger. So, what do you think? I mean, you know, the design flows. It flows back here into the bolster. So you don't have any, like, broken lines. And I think you've got reasonable good, good use of uh, blade length here. It's not contoured G10, but it's grippy G10. And you got some machining here. Um, you know, the... Hardware is nothing incredible. It's just regular button top screws, which for 32 bucks, I think that's where you probably have to be. And there you go, machine look on the on the pivot, which is nice. And it's got access from both sides, just in case you need to put a Torx on both sides to break anything loose there. And that um, stop pin looks pretty it looks pretty dang stout uh doesn't it done it done it yes it does and yeah so all in all the ergos on this knife are pretty fair pretty fair uh when you do this then you're telling somebody where the second finger is gonna go and if you just i'm up on it I'm up on there, but I'm okay. So, I'm okay. And here, actually, because this finger's fatter than the first one, believe it or not, um, actually, this is more comfortable. Now, if I'm in, uh, in the kitchen cooking, then that means my wife's out of town. That's what that means. <laughs> but it's possible. It's possible. And uh, yes, because she, she's t terrorized if she sees me in the kitchen. She usually shoes me out of there before some disaster occurs. But there you go. Balance point. There's actually a balance point on here. Can you believe that? Wow, I would figure this thing would just tip like this with that blade being that heavy. But it actually balances right there. So, okay, okay. Okay, we got the dirt rag out. So let's see um, how we're going to take this thing apart. And number eight. And number eight. And number eight. And you're hired. And number six is on there. I don't think I have to take that off to... 
I have to take it off if I want to take the scale off the liner, but otherwise, let's see which side has the screw and which side doesn't, and they're both turning. Ooh, they were, but this one stopped. Okay, that's because I stopped it with my finger. Now I'm trying to figure out which side is the actual screw because I may be turning, I am turning the wrong side. That's why that was uh, being a difficult little deal there. I was turning the back side. Whew, well, it's not a D-shaped pivot, I guess. We can go that far. So we're going to take it apart this way, which is fine because then I don't have to mess with the pocket clip. Let me see if these are going to screw out this way. I mean, sometimes, there you go. Okay. Sometimes the screw comes out from there because you're turning this one. No. All nice and proper. Woo. We all hot class here. So there you go. And you get to see the scale and everything. And no, I didn't put the lube on that. So don't accuse me. I will do it going back, but not now. There you go. What the heck? Skeletonized liner that looks stonewashed. It's got a little edginess, so maybe not stonewashed. Looks like it was a little bit, but it knocked pretty much everything down for edginess. Uh, but here we go. Flip side and this side. Multi-row bearings. Man, I feel like I moved uptown now. Lots of goop. We got plenty of lube, but it's not heavy, greasy, like, you know, stuff. Get out of there. Now, it's lightweight type lube stuff, so... So there we go. Uh, all in all, ceramic detent ball. There's your lock bar. And of course, you don't need a steel insert because this is steel liner. Uh, and there's your backspacer, which you can take off or not. Whatever you want. If you're cleaning your knife, you probably don't need to take it off. But uh, here you go. Here's your blade. And this is where they have milled the access area for the bearings. So if you want to go that route and build a spack, oh, what? hold on. I got lint hanging off my thing here. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, so here we go. And really, really probably don't need much to... And actually, if lube, as some people claim slows the bearings down a little bit which it does on spinners that's for sure uh, then maybe it's a good thing to use here uh, because lord almighty uh, that's guillotine action on that thing so here we go flip put it on Bearings on the other side. And put our liner back. Okay. Which goes right here. Really easy. There's our scale. Right back on. Pivot screw. Give it a little bit of tightening there and body screws. They fit right in there. This is really easy to do. So let's see where we are. Well, we're centered up. How's that action? A little less guillotine. Not much. A little less. So there we are back. Eh, 
I guess if I really wanted to crunch down, which I don't, uh, I could make this have a, you know, a slower drop, maybe. But it's okay. Hey, it's real easy action on here. Big old dog. And if, I mean, I appreciate big monster knives as much as the next guy. And, you know, hey. This is nothing compared to some of the cold steel knives that are out there with six inch blades and, you know, 12, 13 inches overall or more. Okay. So, uh, but it's fun and you could carry this. This is seven point, what, two, two ounces. Uh, you know, so it's carryable. Uh, it's probably not your preferred daily carry, but hey, it'll get attention, won't it? Whew. Baby, yeah, absolutely. Take care. I'm going to let you go, but the CHG10 knives I'll try and talk more about as we go forward and bring in, you know, the 3519 and, and of course, the 3530, those kinds as well later on, and we will go forward from there. There are a bunch of other models that are in G10, so don't forget about those, both on uh, AliExpress, my 9TIEDC, on Wei, his, his, his site, W-E-I is his name, or White Mountain Knives. So either way you go, way you go is good. And you know what we do around here. We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.